Hello everybody, Steve Stein here again. Um, I'm going to be doing a video by KISS off of KISS Alive 2, and this is for a song called I Stole Your Love. Um, I had a request for this one, which is actually a lot of fun for me to do because I enjoy um, old KISS. That's one of the reasons why I started learning how to play. So I'm actually tuned standard right now. I don't have my half-step guitar with me right now. Um, and so just if you were playing along with the, the album, you would be tuned down a half step. Just be aware of that. So let me show you the intro riff for I Still Your Love. It sounds like this. Okay, so let me show you what's going on there. What I'm going to be doing is barring over the fourth fret of the fifth, fourth, and third strings. Okay, and then I'm going to make a power chord with my third and my pinky by placing them on the sixth uh, fret of the fourth and third strings as well. So at this point, I'm pressing on these two strings, the middle two strings with my index finger, and I'm also pressing on those two strings with my third and my pinky. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pluck the fifth string, and then I'm going to pluck those two middle strings, the third and fourth strings, where my ring finger and my pinky are, and then right after I pluck those, I'm going to pull them off like this. Okay. So notice how I'm separating the fifth string when I pluck it from the middle two, right? So it's not like that. I'm trying to stop that string before I move on. And again, these are small techniques, and I've got a lot of videos out there that you can watch that will help you in understanding what, uh, how to do these techniques. But basically, the easiest way to do it is when you come from playing the fifth string with your pick, and you're going to go pluck the middle two strings. If you set your pick down on the fourth string to be ready to pluck, and you touch the fifth string with the top of your thumb, you can kill the string right there by just setting it up there. You see? So then you're going to do your pull off. Then you're going to go back and you're going to pluck the fifth string again. And then you're going to pluck the middle two strings where you're barring here. So you're going. So that's how it's going to work, because you're going to play this, then you're going to do those pull-offs, then back to the fifth string, and then to those middle two notes again with your bar. You're going to do that twice. Okay, and then what you're going to do is, you could do this two ways. I'm going down here, because it's just faster for me to stay down in this one position, but you could move if you wanted to. What I'm doing is making a fourth string power chord, by putting my first finger on the fourth string second fret, putting my ring finger on the third string fourth fret, and putting my pinky on the second string fifth fret. So I'm going. So now if you wanted to, you could hike all the way up, excuse me, you could hike up to the seventh fret of the fifth string, and that would be okay as well, and make a power chord up there. So then I'd go. instead and again either way is just fine whatever works for you so up to speed let me kind of show you what this sounds like now after we get done with that we have a second ending the second ending is going to go down to the a open power chord okay, so right there i'm using my index finger on the fifth or excuse me fourth and third strings again this time at the second fret i'm strumming fifth fourth and third strings and remember with power chords um, as again, in many of my videos, keep your wrists small. Don't do big strums and hit all these other strings. Keep everything really tiny and, and tight when you play. Okay, just nice small movements. So you're going to go from there to the second fret of the fifth string and make a power chord there. So essentially what you're doing here is you're playing a, a power chord on the fourth fret of the fifth string, the second fret of the fifth string, and then the open A chord as a power chord as well. And then the only other power chord at this point is the seventh fret of the fifth string. But I'm playing it as a fourth string power chord right here instead. Okay, but it's entirely up to you. So those, if you think about it visually, that's what you've got. You've got this, 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 and this. Those are your chords. So the beginning we're going. Okay, 
So again, the most important thing when you're learning how to play songs is that you want to make sure that you can hear the song in your head. Number one, before you ever start trying to approach something. And the second thing is, is then you want to try and absorb the concept, whichever concept it is that you're trying to learn, and you want to take your time with it. So for instance, if this is really strange to you, or this fourth string power chord is really strange to you, you have to just take time and absorb that piece before you move on to the next thing. So I've got... So that's how that little intro riff goes. We use it a lot in this song. You'll notice I gotta jump out of there early to get down to my A chord. So in my head, I'm hearing the song, and I know that I've got to get out of there to get to the A. So I'm not really counting how many times I'm doing it. I'm just thinking, okay, i got to get down there, so i got to leave whatever my pattern is. So I'm leaving the pattern halfway through. See, so I'm ending with... Right there on that note, I'm taking off and dropping down. Now, because this was done live, when they're playing live, they may even duck out of there early just to get over there because they're, you know, running around and doing everything like that. So you always have to keep that element in, in mind when you're playing is, you know, when, when the performers play songs, there are bands for sure that play songs verbatim and everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. But a lot of bands, it's the general gist of what you're doing. And um, you're just trying to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. And please always remember, you're just trying to have fun with these songs, right? So you have... Then we're going to come off that and we're going to go into the verse. So this is when Paul says, I remember the day that we met. You're going to play an E power chord. So it's just like the A that you did here, but you're up on the fifth and fourth strings now with this little bar. You're going to strum the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings. Then you're going to go to the second fret of the sixth string, make a power chord. And then underneath it, make a power chord on the fifth string. And then back up. And go back to our riff. Now, that was the verse. That was the intro and the verse. So now I'm leading into the pre-chorus. So in the pre-chorus, I'm going to go to A. And then B at the second fret. And then C sharp at the fourth fret, the intro chord that I played. And then I just stop. I slide off and I quit until the, the chorus comes. And the chorus is the same thing again. The chorus is the intro riff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play that whole thing again for you, the, the intro of the song into the verse, into the pre-chorus, and then I'll stop right at the chorus. So I'm going like this. Drums come in. Hands in. this time, and then we're going to head down to A, this is the pre-chorus now, and, and then you stop. So the reason why you're staying up on that, that riff, that intro riff, and not going down to A right away is because the pre-chorus is A as well, so it would be weird if you went... <laughs> So they don't do that. All they're doing is going. Then you stay there, and then it just drops down to A. And then B. And then C sharp. And then the verse starts. Now when the verse starts, or excuse me, I'm sorry, the chorus. When the chorus starts, it's just that intro riff over and over and over like this. Stow your love. Stow your love. I stole your love like that. And then A. And then you 
go back into your, into your verse again, okay? So that's the gist of what's happening with the intro, the verse, the pre-chorus, and the chorus. And the thing to understand is really it's all the same. It's all the same riff except for the pre-chorus. The difference is, is when you're in the chorus, you just keep going back. <laughs> You go to that twice, where in the intro of the song, you went... You see? So they went different directions, okay? And then your verse comes along, your verse was... So the only discrepancy through this entire song is when you're shifting from one thing to the next. Are you going to here, or are you going down to A, or, and to be honest, a lot of times it's really hard to tell which one you're going to. So what I do is I just simplify it in my head. Whenever I'm playing my chorus, for instance, I'm always heading up. Whenever I'm going to my pre-chorus, because it's A, I stay on the chord, okay?